Okay, um, so hi everyone. Sorry for the delay. Um, and thanks, Ross, for the nice intro. Um, I'm really, really happy to be presenting here at NACES and give this talk uh, from Berlin. Uh, right now, my neighbors are about to go to sleep, but because I'm in Spanish, uh, I haven't had dinner yet. So uh, this very short talk was an excuse uh, to dig deep into the sector I'm currently working in, space. And I'm going to tell you how to solve three cartography problems in a space through three real stories from 60s and the 70s, hoping that you will find it interesting and most of all, uh, inspiring. But before telling these um, amazing uh, stories, I will cover really, really quickly uh, some basics, some fundamentals. Even before the Sputnik, uh, the first satellite uh, that we sent into space, we were able to figure out how things move or how things are positioned uh, in our solar system. Kepler's uh, and Newton's laws help us to understand the physics of space and motion. Then last century innovation give us the technology to live out our planet. Um, satellites such as this one, uh, that's this tiny one from, from planet that is called DOF, uh, space probes uh, and Q space, spacecrafts. And well, um, um, I guess we cannot count this one among any of, any of the uh, former categories that I mentioned before. Um, these three types of uh, spacecrafts use a huge number of sensors uh, to get inputs um, and filter noise uh, that will help the guidance, navigation, and control systems to, be, to, to give answers to questions such as, uh, where is up, where am I, and where I'm going, and correct the position and trajectory of the vehicle, if needed, uh, using actuators such as forces and torques. Star trackers, for instance, uh, were being used by Apollo crews as guides to determine the waypoints in order to get to the moon and out of the moon. Uh, and as all sailors, they um, use uh, star charts um, to navigate using uh, them as a reference point. But what happens when there is a problem? What happens if you are trying to get back home with a broken ship and no visible stars? This and many other questions need to be uh, solved by the mission control team back in Houston and executed by the Apollo 13 crew. So if you cannot um, use the stars, what should you use? Well, you use the Earth Terminator. The line, well, sorry, um, the circle that divides uh, the day from the night. Uh, so, using um, the Earth Terminator and the only star in the sky that was impossible to miss, that uh, it was the sun, the crew was able to uh, the crew was able to triangulate and correct the trajectory and return safely home. So, from one Apollo that everything went crazy to one that everything went by the manual. So in this picture, uh, James Conrad Jr. Uh, is posing next to Surveyor 3, while the later landed pretty badly on the moon, uh, Apollo 12, with the help of uh, the Apollo um, guidance computer, did an amazing job. So as you can see on the top left um, corner, in the last landing stage, the lunar module was uh, almost flying uh, parallel to the uh, moon floor. So the, the crew, uh, the astronauts, were able to peer through this uh, triangular um, um, windows 
and, and then the computer displayed on the console uh, the expected landing spot coordinates using the angle, these, these angles that are marked on the windows, uh, that were angles composed by um, the astronaut eyes and the lunar uh, floor, okay? Uh, the pilot, of course, could change and update manually uh, the angle and eventually the coordinates of the landing. And as you can see in this picture, Conrad Jr. nailed it. Uh, they landed 600 feet from Surveyor 3. While we, we were able to, um, to find a surveyor uh, on the moon and land safely next to it, aliens in the universe will have a harder time trying to get to us. So more than uh, 40 years ago, uh, NASA sent two probes, um, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, in a grand tour uh, to go beyond our solar system with a message for any extraterrestrial intelligent life that may encounter it. This message, this golden disk, um, was made in less than two um, months and without any additional cost. The project was led by um, the famous astronomer Carl Sagan, and it tells the story of our planet, um, expressed through science, through sound, and through images. Um, in the bottom left uh, is Frank Drake's uh, pulsar map. It explains where we are in the galaxy based on the location of uh, 14 pulsars. So you can see here the pictures of Frank Drake, uh, the astrophysicist Jocelyn uh, Bell Burnell, who as a postgraduate student discovered the first uh, radio pulsar in 1967, and of course, uh, Carl Sagan. But since then, we have discovered billions and billions of pulsars, but also uh, their pulses direction change over time. So, uh, for aliens, finding uh, 14, these 14 uh, pulsars is going to be an impossible task. This was the last shot of Wire uh, in 1990, uh, looking back at the Earth before leaving the, the, the solar system. Now that it looks like uh, there is a new era of space exploration, I would like to use this talk uh, to inspire uh, future cartographers, you, um, to think about this problem and research ways to position ourselves in the universe. So many thanks. Uh, it's been a, it has been a, a very short um, talk, but I hope you, you have enjoyed it. And you have the, the list of reference that I've been using in this uh, amazing um, journey. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Ramiro, for uh, your talk. Uh, some really cool stuff. Uh, we do have a question uh, right off the bat here um, from Isaac. Um, you talked about coordinates in the moon where the Apollo landed. Is there a single projection system used there? Um, so basically, the, the maps of the moon are always azimuthal. So um, I guess they have their, their own coordinate systems. But um, what they use is these coordinates um, that were uh, based on, on the angle in, in, the, in the triangle uh, of, the, of the windows. Uh, there are also, uh, in, in Apollo missions, in fact, there are four coordinate systems. One is based on the um, relationship with the moon, also with the, with the landing, um, um, so, sorry, for, uh, from the launch of the um, spacecraft, also coordinate system in the lunar module and also in the command module. So it's a little bit more complicated, but I guess um, the, the, the answer was the, the first one. So usually it's a, an azimuthal um, uh, projection, but um, that's what I know, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool, uh, we'll wait just a couple uh, 
a little bit here for um, any other questions coming through. Yeah, and if not, uh, it's really easy to find me in in, in any social media. Um, yeah, uh, at Rami Aznar. And if you have any question regarding uh, web mapping, uh, uh, satellites, and and mapping, yeah, I'm free to answer. Looks like there's also some interest in aliens. So, are they? Is that okay to contact you about aliens? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would really be it would be great. Yeah. But as I okay. say, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Cool. Um, then I think, thank you so much uh, for your talk. And yes, uh, take a look at the screen, um, you know, see the references, see uh, where you can contact um, him. And we will uh, move on.